Okay, so, so I should probably share my screen. Just realized I'm not doing that. Okay, so uh, just to, to just to repeat what I was saying. So uh, we actually have uh, three inputs to this function. We have k, which is the number of successes for which we're looking for the probability. Um, we have n, which is the number of trials, and we have p, which is the probability of success for any given trial, right? Um, but for convenience, we're just going to put k in here. And remember, the first part of this is combinations, n choose k. And, uh, you know, I, I gave some justification for that in our last lecture. Um, there's just a lot of different, there are many different ways that you can, uh, let's say, put 4 over 12 or something like that. There, there are a number of different ways that you can achieve uh, 4 over 12 or 5 over 15 or something like that. Um, we've got p to the k, that's the probability to the number of events, the complement of the probability to the, uh, the uh, sort of the, well, sort of the complement of the number of events, but n minus k, you know, number of trials minus the number of events. So if we were trying to determine something like, um, you know, uh, probability of four successes in five uh, in five trials, um, where, you know, k is four, um, n is five, and let's just say probability is 0.5, we could fill this in and we could work it out, right? That's, that's not out of the realm of possibility. Of course, we would need to, uh, you know, break this out into the combinations function, um, which is fine. We could, we could totally do that. Uh, but, you know, ultimately we can just we can just use the function that we have uh, coded up. Um, again, if, uh, you know, combinations here is uh, n choose k, um, and that equals the, uh, the factorial of n over um, factorial of n minus k multiplied by k factorial. So that's just that. Um, we could plug that you know, directly into the binomial PMF. I, I think we usually just represent it with this n choose k uh, as, as such. Um, that's very common. Um, so one thing that, one thing you might wonder here is uh, what if we only have, you know, instead of these uh, five choose four, whatever, what if we only have one choose one or you know n is one and k is one and I think this is the kind of thing that you want to you want to work out on your own it's the kind of thing that you want to take a look at at some point I think that's really really helpful right so uh, one choose one well how many different combinations are there of one choose one and we could work it out one factorial over uh, one minus one factorial which is zero, which is one, zero factorial is one, multiplied by one factorial, which is one. That's just one, obviously. So if we were to plug these in, k, k is one and n is one, this would be one. Uh, this would be uh, 0.5 to the first power multiplied by 0.5 to the first power uh, or to, to the one, right? So um, at the end of the day, the probability that we're going to choose or the probability that uh, we're going to get a success in one trial is going to be uh, 0.5. Um, and and I think I think these these types of formulas they're nice to look at um, when you plug in some sort of obvious uh, you know some obvious values, right? We we know that um, you know if we've got one trial and there's only success or failure and the probability is 0.5, well, the probability of getting a 1 is 0.5. And we could change the probability and, you know, it would that, that would stay the same, right? We could make it 0.3 and then the probability of getting success in one trial would be 0.3. And essentially, we just get, uh, you know, it's a Bernoulli trial that we have overcomplicated. So 
Uh, let's let's think about a few. Let's do these. Uh, yeah, let's do all of these. I've got three binomial problems, and um, why don't we do? Hmm. We could do the first one. How about that? And then I'll have you two, you you all do the second two. So uh, I think these these should be pretty easy. Um, but it's just probably helpful to see a worked problem um, before we get too far. So what is the probability in 12 coin flips of a fair coin that you get seven heads? Okay, well, we've kind of done this already, right? So, you know, one way that we could represent that is one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five. Um, that's one way that we could get, uh, you know, seven heads and 12 flips. But of course, there's a lot more ways to do that. Um, so what is our N? That's just 12 flips, right? There's 12 events. Um, what is our K? That's seven. What is our P? That's 0.5, it's a fair coin. So if we want to apply our, our function over here, we've got this binomial PMF function right here. We can, we can just plug these values in, right? We can just say, okay, well, um, n is uh, 12. And I'm just gonna do it like this. k is uh, seven and p is 0.5. And then, so n, p and k. Uh, is the order binomial, our binomial PMF is using, which is fine. And if I run this, we'll just see what we get. Okay. So, this is, yeah. Uh, point 0.193. So the probability of, uh, you know, seven heads in 12 coin flips is something around roughly 20%. Uh, a little bit less than 20%. Okay, so I've got two more of these and I'll leave these to you. I'll put, um, I'll put three minutes on the timer. And uh, what I want you to realize is that these kind of textbook problems are sort of all similar. They're not necessarily all the same, but, but they're kind of the same construct. So it's important to have an archetypal problem that you're working with. Uh, whether it's you know coin flips, uh, sure, it could be coin flips. Uh, you just have to be able to extrapolate that to other types of phenomena, not just coins. So I'll put uh, three minutes on the timer and go ahead and answer these.
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and solve these. Um, the way that I'm going to solve them is the same way I solved this first one. Uh, in fact, I'm just gonna copy this and change these values for n, p, and k. So uh, this first one sitting on a park bench, you observe geese, there's a probability of 0.3. Well, we can put that in. It's a probability of 0.3 that any goose walking by has black feet. What is the probability that four out of the next 12? So that would be a k of four out of the next 12. Uh, geese walking by has black feet. All right, so that's one. The next one, um, at the cat cafe, there's a 40% chance. That sounds like probably that's a 0.4 probability that any cat you see is a Siberian. What is the probability that six out of the 14 uh, cats of the park are Siberian? Six out of 14. So that should get us, uh, should get us our results. And uh, let's save. So it looks like uh, 0.23 and 0.21. Um, so if you need to answer, essentially if you need to answer these types of problems, there's a couple ways you could do it, right? You could uh, do it by pen and paper. Uh, I think it's kind of nicer to just code the function and plug these in as long as you understand, um, you know, kind of the underlying mechanism of binomial, right? That's, uh, that's why we took so much time in those underlying mechanisms. Um, because, you know, at the end of the day, you're going to, you're going to use a function that either you write or is contributed by, uh, by a library like stats models or um, uh, SciPy, you know. Um, the thing is, you need to be able to recognize it's a binomial problem. And there are these uh, kind of telltale signs, right? What is the probability that something out, you know, some number out of some other number, uh, you know, things are this, uh, and it's a binary sort of outcome. So uh, we can we can model that, right? We can model that pretty easily. Uh, we can also model things that are a lot more complex than that, and uh, we've done that, right? We've done things in uh, you know base three systems where we've taken a subset of the containing set of the of the sample space, and we've just put cardinality of a over cardinality of s. So even if you don't recognize, even if you don't recognize something to be binomial, you should be able to code a, a way forward. You should be able to find a way to approach an answer. Even if it's intractable from a counting perspective, you should be able to do, um, you should be able to approach from at least a sampling perspective, right? So these are all uh, potential methods of discovering the probability of something. And, you know, uh, there, there's a lot more math that you could build out in your probability uh, understanding, and that's great. But, um, you know, we've got computers, and we can, we can at least brute force answers when we need to. So uh, we talked about the PMF, right, the, the mass function. Uh, let's talk about the CDF, the cumulative distribution function. Um, so the cumulative distribution function for the binomial, right? This is the binomial CDF, is going to be uh, pretty reminiscent of the PMF, as it turns out. And sometimes this is the case where, uh, okay, so now we're considering s le or x less than or equal to k. We are going to take the sum from uh, from zero, from, uh, you know, k is zero up to k, right, um, of the PMF. So this is, again, this is just, uh, I'm, I'm substituting i in here for k because we've got this variable i. So um, n choose i multiplied by p to the i um, multiplied by 1 minus p to the n minus i. That's essentially, right, that's essentially the same as the PMF. So when we see, when we see this, when we see this summation, this uh, could mean a couple things in terms of our code, right? It could mean sum. Could mean that. 
in a lot of cases, it's going to mean that's a for loop, right? We've got some uh, value, right? That's for i in range. And this is going to be, you know, 0 to k plus 1, right? That, that's kind of a direct translation. And then uh, on every iteration, we're going to perform this operation accumulated into something, uh, whether we collect the individual numbers and then sum at the end, or whether we, uh, you know, just do plus plus gets to, to accomplish this. Okay, so I believe, oh, let me, let me give you another perspective on the CDF. Uh, I think I did this before as well. Um, this is an important thing to realize about the CDF. So, oh, I don't know why that is so small. Uh, okay, you know what? I'll just delete the whole thing. All right, so if we are thinking about the probability that, let's say, x is less than or equal to 4, and that's a big x, not a little x, this is going to be, uh, it, it, it's a summation, right? It's, it's cumulative. So this is going to be the probability that x is 0, plus the probability that x is 1, plus the probability that x is 2, plus the probability that x is 3, plus the probability that x is 4, right? This is going to get us the same thing. You can use uh, five calls to the PMF to accomplish the same thing as a CDF function is going to do. Um, so I'm going to have you code out the binomial CDF, um, and I think there's a typo. There's a little bit of a typo here that I should fix. Um, it says the function name here should be binomial PMF. That's not correct. It should be binomial CDF. Uh, so I'll fix that uh, when we start. Um, so given what I just said about the CDF, uh, you should be able to code this and uh, write this is going to be binomial CDF n the high value of k and the probability uh, by default should be 0. 0.5. So I'll put five minutes on and uh, yeah, try to code that out.
Okay, so let's go ahead and code through this. Pull this back up here. All right, so we're looking at the uh, the binomial CDF. Uh, sorry, it seems like somebody might have their mic on. Uh, if, could, if people could check and then mute your, mute your mic if it's on. Okay, I think I think they got it. Okay. All right, so uh, we're coding this binomial CDF function and we're gonna call out to binomial PMF within this function. So let's, uh, I'll just paste that down there. I know I'm gonna need it, so I'll just grab it. Um, and then the name of our function is going to be called binomial CDF and we're passing in n, uh, I kind of changed the order of these, n k high, and then p, uh, p of 0.5. And uh, I'm gonna do this as an accumulator. Well, here, why don't I do this? I will do, I'll, I'll do this as a collector. So I'm gonna make a list, and uh, this will be um, just results from calling uh, the binomial PMF. I'm gonna say for uh, i in range, might as well use i. And I'm gonna go from zero to k high plus one. Um, of course, I don't need the zero in there, it's implied. So uh, res.append the binomial, binomial PMF of n, p, and k high. And then I can return the sum of those results, okay? so. That's, uh, that's all that is. And if we run this, we can answer, well, let's answer uh, that prior question, flipping a fair coin um, nine times, what is the probability that there will be four or fewer heads? Let's find out. So um, four, uh, so this is a K of four, that's our K high, right? Our n is nine, and our uh, we're flipping a fair coin, so our probability is 0.5. And we can go ahead and call the binomial CDF with those arguments passed in. Okay. That doesn't seem quite right. 1.23, it's greater than one. What is going on here? N K high. We know something is wrong there. Um, I'm just gonna print this and, you know, troubleshoot it, make sure there isn't something really weird happening. Oh, hey, look at that. Uh, that makes sense, right? Because uh, I shouldn't be passing in K high, I should be passing in I. There we go. So that should work now, and I can do res.append again. Okay, 0.5, huh. Four or fewer heads is 0.5. That's that's cool. That makes sense actually. Now that I'm thinking about it, because uh, zero, one, two, three, four, um, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? That's ten possibilities. We're taking the middle down. That completely makes sense. Okay, so uh, let me give you this code, this uh, function. And I think there's, yeah, there's a CDF problem here. So let's go ahead and do this. Oh, this one's, this is one of my favorite kinds of problems. Uh, when I write these, um, I tend to write these uh, because I like thinking of, of this 
in, in a real world application where you have parallel component components in the circuit and you have redundancy. Um, you know, so what do I mean by that? Uh, let's say, you know, I, I showed this example the other day, but let's say you have, you know, a few of the same circuit and these are wires. And the idea being that if this one's out, these other ones can still be functioning in the circuit. And so, um, you know, often this kind of problem will be framed as, well, you need to have, uh, you know, what probability do you need to have of functioning for, um, uh, for a circuit to have the probability upon observation of being functioning at some given time? Um, this is not that complex uh, of a problem. Uh, this is more, you know, there are eight components in parallel and functioning, they function independent of each other, right? So at least three of these need to be operational. Um, the probability of any given component being operational upon observation is 0.7. What is the probability that at least three components are operational upon observation? Okay, so at least three. You have to think about this. What does the CDF give us, right? The CDF gives us uh, less than or equal to some uh, k. So what does it mean when we ask the probability that at least three? All right, so I'm going to, uh, I'm going to put four minutes on for this. Uh, see if you can get it. Um, there's, yeah, uh, see if you can get it. And then, and then we'll talk about the result.
Okay, so let's look at this. Let's uh, break this down and uh, go ahead and solve it. So binomial is where we're at. Okay, so uh, the way that we want to think about this, there are eight components in parallel. And uh, so we're considering some number of components functioning out of eight. And uh, because of that, we can, we can assume that our n is going to be eight, okay? And then uh, we're saying at least three of those components need to be operational. What is the probability that at least three are operational? Well, here's the, here's the thing, the CDF is going to give us, uh, you know, if we've got these eight components, and I'll just do it like this. Um, if we're talking about uh, three of them, then we're considering with the CDF, the CDF is going to give us, you know, the probability of three out of the eight being, uh, being operational. However, we're interested in this. We're interested in um, the complement of that. So what we can do, uh, well, what we can do is pretty simple. We can say um, we've got a k, a k high of two, okay? I'm sorry, just to be, just to be very clear, um, you know, this is component three and then four, uh, five, six, seven, and eight. Right, and this is one and two. So what we can do is we can get the CDF of this, and then we can just say one minus the CDF. So it's that kind of problem. All right, so uh, we have a k high of two, and um, we have a operational, a component being operational is uh, 0.7, so our probability is 0.7. So I'm just going to snag this. And we can pass all of those in. Um, this is going to get us uh, the probability of two or less components being operational. So we can just subtract this from one. And that will give us, uh, that should give us, well, it looks like, that's pretty good, right? 0.98 is, uh, is what we're looking at. Um, so because of the parallelism in our circuit, we have, uh, I don't know, we have a pretty functioning circuit, you know, like we have to, you know, fill in the story about this circuit, how, you know, do components stop being operational for, you know, are they only operational 70% of the time? Is that, is that what's happening here? Maybe so, you know. Uh, we could get deeper into a story around it. But at the end of the day, um, what we're really showing here is leveraging the complement uh, against the CDF in order to find the answer to the probability of at least something, right? At least this many components being operational in this case. Um, okay, so... Um, I'm going to have you code a function um, that's a lot like the functions that we've coded already in our analysis, and I, our, our analyses of things, right? So this is going to be, um, you know, it's going to be a dictionary coding function, or sorry, a, a dictionary coding challenge. Um, and I'll, I'll just put, pull this up here while I'm explaining it. So binomial PMF dictionary, all right? So the dictionary, the function will have four parameters. It's gonna have n, which is the number of trials, k low, which is the low value of k, right? Um, so instead of starting at zero, we're, we're gonna start at whatever k low is, but we can, you know, maybe even default that to zero if we want, um, up to k high, which, you know, if we're talking about uh, a number of trials being eight trials, we could go from zero up to eight right? Um, or we could go from two to four, or two to five, you know, um, we're just giving some flexibility here with k low and k i. And then uh, p for the probability. 
So this will build a your your function should build a dictionary that has uh, k as the keys, right? The value of k for the keys, and the uh, probability of k events occurring as the value associated with that key. So I'm gonna put five minutes on for this. Um, if you need to, uh, there are other functions out there. If if you want to take a peek at the general analytic approach day, there's a function in there, uh, a closed formula function for dictionaries that, you know, you could you could look at that and adapt that to solve this if you feel really stuck. So um, yeah, I'm gonna start the timer, uh, see if you can get there with this, reference that general an analytic approach slides deck, uh, you know, if you if you're really stuck and you want a hint.
Okay, so let's let's go through a solution for this. Um, and this this is a very important pattern to know. Um, this is uh, one of the patterns that we we really focus on in the technical interview. Um, so a uh, function is called binomial PMF dictionary. And it has n k low, oops, k low, k high, and a probability that defaults to 0.5. So we're going to instantiate a dictionary. That's the first thing we do. And then we are going to simply loop from k low to k high. So for k in range, we'll go k low to k high. Um, the high value of k in the dictionary, well, if it's in the dictionary, then this has to be inclusive. So we'll just add one to that. And then uh, we can just say the sub k is going to get the binomial PMF. Um, and I have to remember the order of this, binomial PMF n p k, right? Binomial PMF n p k. And we can return the dictionary, and that's it. So uh, if we want to see the probabilities for, um, well, let, let's do coin flips just because we've been thinking about coin flips. Uh, all the probabilities from 0 to 12 flips, we can do that pretty easily. So for key and value in, I'll just do p, for uh, you know k and probability in d.items, we can print an f string of the uh, k and the probability. So this kind of gets us back to um, what we were looking at in the counting approach, right? These are uh, the probabilities that we ended up with if we took the counting approach. So, um, you know, theoretically, uh, the counting approach, uh, sorry, not theoretically, but uh, the counting approach gives us the actual values of the theoretical distribution. And we can see that pretty clearly uh, if we were to run, um, run this with the counting approach. So this is in the closed formula. Uh, we're just calling out to binomial PMF. And um, I'm not going to say that that's a better way, you know, better, um, but it's probably the way that you would do it. Um, you know, because do we need to count everything in order to really uh, discover, um, discover something that we have a closed formula to represent? Okay, so um, I'm going to code up one last function in regards to binomial and uh, then we'll then we'll switch topics. We'll move to Poisson. Um, so we're a little bit ahead, actually. Uh, we're going to finish up binomial and move to Poisson. And then after Poisson, we'll uh, likely focus on geometric. Although um, what I'm, I'm going to talk with Clark, and what we might do instead is put another like functions day in because that um, you know that's really. Uh, you know, we can go back and practice writing a bunch of functions. I think that could be more helpful. So we might skip geometric uh, after Poisson. All right, so I'm going to code a binomial CDF dictionary. All right, and we have n, k low. This is going to be very similar. Actually, why don't I just copy this whole thing, right? It's going to be basically the same function uh, with one change, aside from changing the name. So this is a CDF dictionary. It's still going to be n, k low to k high, probability of 0.5 by default. And instead of calling out to the binomial PMF, we're going to call out to the binomial CDF, which I think has a different arrangement of, let's just make sure, n, uh, it's n, k, p. So I need to just be careful about that. This will be n, k, P. And that looks like that looks like it should work. 
So let me just throw those values in there. Um, same values. And I, I think it's nice to, to look at something like this because it really uh, drives home the idea of the accumulation, right? Um, probability of just zero, probability of zero or one, probability of zero or one or two, right? And ultimately, the probability that we're going to get 12 or less successes in 12 trials, well, that's certain. That's certainty, right? Um, if we get zero, one, two, three, up to 12, it's certain we're going to get one of those. So it makes sense for the probability of 12 to be uh, completely probable, right? Okay, so um, if there are any, uh, are there any questions about the binomial distribution, actually? Let's, uh, let me ask that before we take a break. Okay, um, uh, if you do have a question, throw it in the Slack uh, and uh, I'll get to it after the break. We're going to switch gears into Poisson next. So I'll paste the file for Poisson in a moment. Um, let's take a, uh, let's take a six minute break and I will see you all back here momentarily.
Okay, uh, give me just one second. Uh, give me one minute and we'll get back to it. Okay, so we're gonna start in on the Poisson distribution. And uh, I really like the Poisson distribution. I don't know if, if that means anything. Sometimes you, you really like a specific, um, a specific distribution for some set of reasons. And uh, what I really like about Poisson, which I'm gonna open our file here, um, what I really like about Poisson is how it uh, fits into so many phenomena in our universe, right? And not that binomial doesn't, binomial totally does, but um, Poisson has like uh, kind of a different beauty to it that I, that I really enjoy. So um, Poisson simply, we'll, we'll, we'll approach this simply. So Poisson... Um, is the number of events, uh, models the number of events occurring in a given interval of time or space, okay? So what do we need for this? We need to know that, uh, so models uh, independent events. These events are also uh, identically distributed. Uh, we, we assume that they are not related to each other and that they aren't too like globby or something like that. So uh, models independent and ind independent identically distributed events, uh, which we um, we call IDD, which you don't need to know offhand. So I'll leave that out. Um, but the the cardinal thing that we see in Poisson is is time right? Events in time. So we have some span of time. And let's call this uh, zero seconds to 60 seconds. And if we're thinking about events that occur in a span of time, um, well, let's say on average, and the average we, we represent with this lambda. So lambda represents our expectation or our, our average, that is a terrible looking lambda. Let me just, there we go. Um, so uh, lambda represents what we would expect to see. It's an average, right? And what you can imagine is that we've observed this thing, we've observed one minute intervals of whatever this is over and over again, and we've averaged all those results. And so we have, you know, some average number of events that we would expect to see. And let's say there are uh, five events on average. If we're thinking about this, well, where do those events sit in time? Do they all happen right here? Maybe, you know, they could. Um, they could happen like that. They could happen uh, in a way that is evenly spaced, maybe. There are so many different ways. There are so many different ways that this could happen. Um, there's an infinite number of ways that this can happen. And part of that is related to time. So time, uh, as far as we know, is continuous. Um, if we zoom in in time uh, to some moment, that moment is still continuous and we can keep doing that. We, we don't think of that as being discrete. So in some, in some way, Poisson is like this bridge between discrete distributions and continuous distributions. However, 
what we're trying to answer with Poisson is a uh, discrete kind of question. It's the question of, well, if we expect to see five events in one minute, what is the probability of seeing seven events in one minute, right? That, that's a question that we can approach answering with Poisson. And it seems kind of magical because uh, all we need, all we need is this. We just need to know an average number of events that we expect to occur. Of course, there are constraints. We need to know that this, uh, that the events are independent. Um, two events are not going to occur at the same exact instant, although that's a bit of a moot point given time is continuous and we can't superimpose uh, two items in the same exact moment. That doesn't actually make too much sense, but, uh, you know, it's sort of a rule. Um, and the other thing uh, that we have to consider is that this lambda is going to be consistent, right? It's going to be consistent. We're not seeing a lambda of five during, we're not going to consider lambda of five and then lambda of three at a different time. We're actually going to constrain our problem to the, uh, to the time uh, where lambda is five, right? We're not going to take into consideration this other lambda over here. Um, but, you know, e either way, this is kind of a, it's amazing that this exists. Let me say that it, it's a really interesting, um, it's a really interesting distribution. And it allows us to answer some, you know, pretty good questions. So, um, so given a typical frequency, right, given an average lambda, um, we can find the probability of a specific number of outcomes, k. And uh, here's here's the thing: if we have, you know, I, I said uh, zero to sixty seconds in time, and we have a lambda of five. Here's another kind of magical property of this, not to use the word magical too much, but if we change this to 120 seconds, we can modify our, our lambda to accommodate a larger span of time. And if we're talking 60 seconds to 120 seconds, well, we're just going to double our lambda, right? If it's five events in one minute, then we would expect 10 events in two minutes. So that's pretty cool. Um, we can adapt our lambda to different intervals. Okay, so uh, the PMF for this um, is going to, you know, given lambda, we are trying to figure out the probability that x is k, okay? And uh, what this looks like is e to the negative lambda, e being Euler's number, um, multiplied by lambda to the k over k factorial. So uh, the way that I, a way that I like to think about e is that it represents some maybe factor of decay or something like that. Um, I, have a, I actually have a video uh, I think it's four videos, maybe, and I think I have a link to them. Let me uh, let me see if I can track that down. Um, yeah, I have a, I have a short playlist. Now I'll just link it here. Um, this is a you know just an exploration of Euler's number, and uh, we can you know on your own time if you want to take a look at it. Um, I just go into some detail and I, I do it with code. Uh, so, you know, there's some Python to be learned there. Um, so let's, let's think about, uh, types of problems for Poisson. Okay. Like this is, this is really what this is about. The textbook, the types of textbook problems that you can solve with the Poisson distribution. So again, the probability of uh, x being k, and of course we have a lambda that's given, is going to be e to the negative lambda multiplied by lambda to the k over k factorial. Okay, so um, uh, I've, I have an example here. Uh, on average, 10 people visit the ATM in an hour. What is the probability that 12 people visit the ATM in an hour? Okay, well, our lambda is going to be 10. 
we expect 10 people in an hour. And our k is going to be 12 because we're curious, what is the probability given a lambda of 10 that 12 people will visit this ATM? And so what we can do, we can just plug in values if, if we want, we can, we can do this. Uh, we can say this is e to the negative 10 multiplied by 10 to the 12th power over 12 factorial. So we could do that with a calculator. We have Python, so why don't we do that instead? Um, before uh, before we you know work that out, um, I'm going to have you attempt to code the Poisson PMF. All right. So there are a couple ways that you could code this. You could hard code. Well, you could use uh, the value 2.71828 for E, because it is a constant. You can do that. Um, or you can import E from the math module. Uh, you'll also need factorial, right? That's going to be part of this too. Uh, so from math, import E, comma, factorial would do that for you. All right, so let's do four minutes on this. And go ahead and code the Poisson PMF.
elapsed. Okay, so um, I think a lot of people got to a solution on that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just write it. Uh, so I'm gonna say from math, import E and factorial. And uh, I'm gonna do def Poisson PMF, PMF. And uh, we're gonna do a lambda and a K, right? And uh, so I'll do, uh, I can just return this, right? E to the negative lambda multiplied by lambda to the K. Let me move that out of the way. And that is divided by factorial of K. Um, even though I don't need to do this, I, I'm just gonna wrap it in friends to make it look like the original formula. But again, not necessary. And uh, I saw somebody put in the answer to that prior problem. Um, so we were talking about if the expect expectation is 10, what is the probability of 12? Okay, well, expectation is 10, uh, sorry, expectation is 10, probability of 12, uh, we can just take a look at what that would be. It would be an error because Poisson is not defined. It should be Poisson PMF. There we go. Okay, so uh, 0 0.094. Now, that may seem low because you're like, well, we would expect 10, right? So 12 should have a fairly high probability, but uh, let's look at the probability of 10, right? If our expectation is 10, what is the probability of 10? Uh, it's 0 0.125. So that's something to notice is that uh, we are considering a distribution. And, you know, what is the shape of that distribution? We don't really know yet. Uh, we'll know in a little bit. Uh, we'll, we'll have a better idea of it in a little bit. So let's... Um, Let's kind of pull this around uh, and relate it to binomial. I think uh, I think this helps in you know because I want to give some some foundation for understanding these things, not just oh here's the PMF answer this kind of question with it, um, because I want to think I want you to think about coding in terms of it being a creative process and to to create things you usually have to look at what's underneath it. So. Um, Let's think about let's think about Poisson's relationship to binomial. Uh, there is a a simple way to express this. The binomial distribution tends toward the Poisson distribution in certain conditions. If we have a binomial distribution and we increase the value of n toward infinity then the, uh, the value of P, the probability, will tend toward zero. And uh, if you think about lambda, lambda is sort of, uh, we can think about lambda as being equivalent to the probability times the number of trials, okay? So how, how, might we think, how might we think about this? Um, so if you have, again, some span of time, and we can just do 0 to 60 again. If we're thinking about this in, as binomial, and, um, well, if we think about it as binomial, we can divide this into, I don't know, let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 independent trials. Right? And we can take a naive stab at this. We can say, well, um, in 60 seconds, we think, um, maybe we think uh, four events will happen uh, if we're, you know, kind of discretizing it in this way. We're, we're going to say, okay, well, an event here, an event here, an event here, and an event here. I don't know. That's one way that that could happen. But if we think about this as being eight trials, well, what happens when we subdivide these trials? Well, if we subdivide these trials, we don't get more events, right? 
we don't have more events occurring in 60 seconds. Now we've got four successes in 16 trials. And we could do this over and over again. We could, we could do this infinitely until we have uh, something that is continuous. And as we do that, we approach uh, the Poisson PMF uh, if we're starting off with the binomial PMF. So uh, one way that, you know, one way we can, uh, we can think about this, uh, if we hearken back to the binomial PMF, right, this is n choose k multiplied by uh, p to the k, uh, multiply by 1 minus p to the n minus k. Okay, we can do that. Um, so the mean of this, the expectation, our expectation of x, that shouldn't be a sigma, sorry. It should just be a capital E. Our expectation of x is going to be n times p. So let's think about the Poisson PMF. The Poisson PMF is, uh, you know, uh, let's see, probability that x is k is equal to uh, e to the negative lambda multiplied by lambda to the k, it's a terrible lambda, sorry, over uh, k factorial. And our expectation here, our mean here, is, uh, you know, our expectation for x here is going to be, um, it's going to be lambda, right? And as I just said, Lambda is going to be uh, n times p. We can, we can turn this around a little bit. We can say, if lambda is n times p, then what happens uh, if we get lambda, sorry, if we get uh, p by itself, right? We divide both sides by n, and we can see that the probability is actually equal to lambda over n, okay? So we can take that and put that back into the binomial PMF, and it'll look like this. We can say the probability that, that x is k is going to be n choose k, right? Uh, and then we've got lambda over n, right? That's the same thing as our probability. And that is to the k. And this is multiplied by 1 minus lambda over n to the n minus k. That is still, that is still uh, the binomial PMF. Now, we can, what we can do here is we can take this n and we can trend it toward infinity. All right, and uh, that is going to like if you look if you notice what happens right here, that's going to mean that this is going to go towards zero, and this is going to go towards zero. Right here, which means that this whole thing is going to go toward one. So this. We can demonstrate this. We can demonstrate this in code. And, um, and this is uh, kind of what I mean about uh, being, being creative. It's like, okay, well, if, we, if you understand, if you have, have, have a, a reasonable understanding of that, that process, you know, what's happening there mathematically, you can take that a few steps further and figure out, well, um, you know, what does this look like? in code. You want to be able to express mathematical concepts in code. So here we have uh, the binomial PMF and the Poisson PMF I already have, so I'll just go ahead and delete that one. So we have combinations, binomial PMF relies, relies on combinations, and oh, sorry, we don't actually need that because we already imported it. Uh, we've got everything we need right here. Okay, all right, so um, let's start with an n of 1. Okay, um, and uh, let's say lambda is 10, k is also 10. 
So if we just call Poisson PMF on this, we know what it should be. It should be 0 0.125 something. Uh, that's what we saw when we just called it a few minutes ago. The way that we can verify this is we can say for n in range, and we can go from, from uh, the value of k, why not the value of k, and let's go to some arbitrarily high number, and I'm going to use 10,000. So I think that will actually do pretty well. If we look at uh, the results of a of the of passing these values into the binomial distribution, I'll call the binomial PMF n, k, and p, where p equals lambda over n, right? And uh, I'm going to round this to seven places because why not? And now let's do the same thing for, or, or let's look at the Poisson distribution in relation to this. So this will be Poisson, and um, we'll call the Poisson PMF, pass in lambda, k, and uh, we can, again, we can just round this. And I'll round it to seven places. Okay. Oh, uh, missing a closed brace. And uh, just to keep this, uh, so we can see this as it goes, I'm, I'm just going to put an empty space in here. All right, so I think that should be it. We can now look at some verification for what I was just saying. So let's look at that. Notice the binomial PMF is trending toward the Poisson PMF. We can see it clearly. Uh, it's descending, and it's going to get within striking distance of it. Um, you know, this is going to run 10,000 times. Uh, it'll probably be over in just a second. But uh, the reason I'm showing this is that you want to be able to uh, verify the mathematical concept you're studying. Any mathematical concept that you study, you should start trying to write code for it. Um, and look how close this got. It, it got pretty close. Uh, I think we would, you know, with this rounding to seven places, um, you know, what if I did 100,000 or a million uh, of these? I think we'd probably get close. Um, maybe we would get all the way there. I'm not sure. But but we could, we could see that. Uh, feel free to run that on your own and see if it gets, see how close it gets. See how high you have to get to, to get to a certain threshold, right? To get to a certain uh, distance between the two. So, let me comment that out. Um, and also, I, I don't know that I shared this, but I saw working functions in the Slack, so I figured if anybody didn't get the Poisson PMF, um, there's something in the Slack that works. Okay. So again, um, I put that playlist for Euler's number. Uh, that's not anything required for for uh, the DSI or for uh, the technical interview, but I in that playlist, I do try to follow kind of this analytic approach that we use in the technical interview. Okay, so um, you know it's just the discovery of Euler's number in a few different places, and uh, you know I want to encourage you to kind of. Uh, explore these things, right? Explore these things using Python to the best of your ability. Okay, so let's talk about a phenomenon and a question, a Poisson type phenomenon and a related question. So cars passing by an intersection at a certain time of day or year for the duration of a fixed amount of time will likely follow a Poisson distribution. Okay, notice the bounds I'm putting on this. I'm saying a certain time of day and year, uh, a certain part of the year. Uh, duration of a fixed amount of time. So, you know, uh, if we're thinking lunchtime versus, um, I don't know, two in the morning, we're going to expect, expect different traffic patterns. So, you know, when we construct our lambda, uh, when we think about lambda, we need to constrain it to either lunchtime or two in the morning uh, for this intersection. Um, that maybe that goes without saying, but you have to apply uh, some critical thought in relationship with these. 
So uh, here's a specific question related to that Poisson phenomenon. A given intersection will have, on average, 15 cars passing through in 10 minutes. Or, yeah, what is the probability that 20 cars pass through in 15 minutes? So this is uh, not too hard to, to try to answer. Um, the first thing we want to figure out is our lambda, right? So our lambda, is if we have an intersection where it's 15 cars in 10 minutes, what is the prob probability of 20 in 15 minutes? We have to consider this in terms of 15 minutes. So it's 15 cars. How do we convert that to 15 minutes? Well, easy way to do that would be 15 over 20. So, um, you know, uh, sorry, 15 over 10. I don't know why I said 20. Oh, because it's 20 cars passing through in 15 minutes. So 15 times 15 over 20 is going to, or, you know, 3 over 2, right, uh, is going to give us an updated lambda for the span of time of 15 minutes. And then our k is 20, right? What is the probability that 20 cars pass through in 15 minutes? Um, we can just plug that in at this point into the Poisson PMF. Uh, so we can pass in lambda, we can pass in k, and uh, this should be uh, probably less than probability of 10 or so. So let's see. Uh, 0.0769, uh, roughly, right? 0.0769. Um, again, that may be that may seem uh, dramatic if we, because let's print out our lambda. Let's see what what we would expect. I think this is an important thing to notice about Poisson. Um, we expect 22 cars. The probability, uh, or 22 and a half cars, right? Um, but the probability that 20 cars pass by is still pretty low. Now, keep in mind, this is exactly 20 cars. This is not 20 or less cars. This is not 20 or more cars. This is exactly 20 cars. Um, and what you might be thinking about is, okay, well, in this distribution, if we were to represent this graphically, uh, and we start at a k of 0, and we're going up to, I don't know, let's say a k of 20. I'm not going to fill this in um, so much. But let's say we have a lambda of 10, lambda of 10, and that's somewhere right here. So we're going to have a distribution where the peak is here, right? In fact, uh, it'll be something like that. And then it'll have decreasing probabilities as we get, I don't know how many that is, right? Uh, and it'll have decreasing probabilities as we go off to the right. And here's the thing about going off to the right. This will go on forever, right? Um, and it may be an unrealistic constraint, but you know we could ask the question, well, an intersection has 15 cars that pass through in 10 minutes. What is the probability that um, infinite number of cars pass by in 15 minutes? Well. We can't answer that question directly because in infinity is not computable in this sense. Um, but but I want you to notice that you know we are including the possibility of five million cars passing through in fifteen minutes, and there is some minuscule probability that that that, that will occur. Um, although the constraints of reality would prevent that from happening, just you know, unless all the cars were stacked on top of each other or something that wouldn't really be very possible. Okay, so uh, let's think about the CDF for Poisson. And uh, this, is, this is like the binomial PMF, where you, have to, um, where you have to perform a summation. So um, I'm not going to give you much to go on, uh, but I'll give you five minutes to code it. You're going to code the Poisson CDF function. Okay, uh, think about what uh, you know what the parameters should be. Think about that, um, and think about the pattern, the common sort of accumulator pattern that we use for CDFs, and uh, see how how you do on that. All right, so I'll set a timer for five minutes. Do your best on it, and um, we'll code a solution after.
Okay, so I'm gonna code through this. Uh, this will be called Poisson CDF. And I'll just comment those out. Okay, so uh, def Poisson CDF, and I'm gonna do, uh, I'll do what? I'll do lambda low k to high k, and um, I'm I'm just gonna do a simple accumulator here. I'll just do accumulator get zero. I'll, I'll call it Prava. Why not? Prava get zero. I'll say for um, k in range, we'll go from low k to high k plus one, and Prava is going to be incremented by the Poisson PMF. Um, passing in our lambda and the value of k. And we can just return the probability after that. So uh, let's answer a question with this. Um, got a question here. A given intersection will on average have 15 cars that pass through in 10 minutes. What is the probability that more than 15 cars will pass through in 15 minutes? Well, again, that's our lambda where it's 15 by uh, 15 over 10, which ends up being 22.5, I think. And uh, notice this is another one of those more than or uh, at least questions, right? So that implies the, the space of probability above a value. Um, so this is gonna be a one minus kind of problem. And uh, it'll be one minus the CDF, where our lambda, we pass in our lambda, and we need to think about the uh, the k high here, right? Notice it says more than, right? It says more than. That's gonna be 16 or greater. So our k high uh, is going to be 15. We can just pass in, um, we can just pass in 15 for k high. All right, so let's see how that works out. Well, we get a type error because I called it high K. Okay, well, that's, that's fine. Oh, it's missing low K. Well, that makes sense too. Uh, I'll set low K to zero and hopefully that will work now. Okay, so there is a uh, 0.93 probability that we get um, 16 or more cars passing through. That's kind of interesting. Um, let's change this to, if our lambda is 22.5, um, let's change this to 23. No, let, let's change it to 20, let's change it to 22. That's right around 50%, right? Which makes sense. That would make sense that, because um, we're, we're splitting the distribution at the expectation. And I think that's an important thing to realize about the Poisson distribution. Um, if we split it at the, if we split at the expectation and get the CDF below that, it's going to be somewhere right around 0.5 probability um, because we accumulate up to that peak and then we start uh, descending. So that's a CDF question. And, you know, as I said, a lot of this is really about recognizing the problem. It's recognizing, is this a Poisson problem? Is this a binomial problem? Is it a geometric problem? Um, that, that is going to be very important. The next part of that is coding the mathematical function that we ask you to code. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of code, uh, a lot of examples of that throughout our slides, and um, I hope you take advantage of that for study purposes. Okay, so uh, here we've got a breakout, and I'm gonna have you code the Poisson PMF dictionary. And 
uh, yeah. Uh, parameters are lambda, um, although I've been using LAM here. I think it's a little friendlier. So LAM. Um, low K to high K. Uh, lambda will be constant, right? Whatever lambda you pass in is going to be what you use to populate your dictionary. And this is very much um, uh, like the binomial PMF dictionary that was written before. Okay, so let's let's do let's do six minutes on this, and that will likely be uh, where we wrap up today.
Okay, so this is going to be, like I said, it's going to be very similar to the uh, binomial PMF dictionary. Um, so we've got a def, Poisson, PMF dictionary, and um, we've got a couple, you know, a couple parameters in here. We have lambda, we have low k, we have high k. And um, I'm just going to set up a dictionary. D gets the constructor. And I'm going to say for uh, k in range, we'll go from low k to high k. And D sub k is just going to get the Poisson PMF of lambda and k. Oh, uh, this should be high k plus one. Then we can return the dictionary. All right, so uh, I think that'll work. And I'll say for, um, actually let's, let's call this and just look at the results. Okay, so we get a dictionary out of it. And I'm gonna say for uh, key and uh, probability in d.items, Let's discover what this is. So print f string um, k and then p. Let's uh, actually give this values. How about that? Uh, lambda of 10, uh, low k of, well, let's do 0, and high k of 30. Okay. So it shouldn't be too surprising that we have uh, we have a peak probability at 10. I think one thing that might be surprising is that 9 and 10 both have the same probability. And that, that's a facet of the Poisson distribution that, that we can see in other uh, instances as well. Um, there's near symmetry around 10, but remember, um, as we head toward infinity, we still retain... Uh, we retain probability, right? So, you know, uh, this stops at zero on the left side of the distribution, but um, trends towards zero on the right side of the distribution. Okay. So uh, let's see if I have time to talk about this last thing, which is really just a, a point of interest more than it is anything else. Um, let's see. I think I think we can talk about this, and then uh, call it a call it a day. Um, so, let's say there's a phenomenon out there in the universe, and we're observing it, and it follows perfectly a Poisson process. Let's say that exists. Um, let's say we observe uh, we take ten thousand observations. Um, what? How many events would we expect for each value of k? How would we determine that? And this, uh, this will seem obvious once I describe it, okay? Um, it'll be obvious once I describe it. So let's say we have this dictionary, this Poisson PMF dictionary. What we can do, well, you know what? How about I do this? I will, um, I'll make this into a function instead. If we want to determine the expectation, expected counts, then what we can do is, uh, let's do something like this. Uh, the count expectations, there's a lambda, there's a low k, there's a high k, and then there's a number of samples in consideration. In this, in this occurrence, uh, in this uh, story, there's 10,000, okay? Um, we can instantiate a dictionary and I'm going to, um, there, there's a couple different ways we can do this. The, I'm going to do this in the simplest way. Uh, this is very much like the prior function, right? We go from low k to high k plus 1. And um, we say d sub k 
is going to get the Poisson PMF of lambda and k. Now, if we want to transform this into accounts from probabilities, well, the probability is what we expect. You know, we can, if we take a probability and multiply it by a number of occurrences, then that should give us a count. So we can just take this and multiply it by the number of samples, like so. And um, I'm going to round this uh, just to be, you know, because we, we are considering the count of things. And then we'll return the dictionary. Okay, so uh, D is going to get this, this uh, expected number of counts. And, oops. Uh, we'll set, again, we'll set lambda to 10, low k to, uh, uh, let's do 5, and a high k of 15, just to fit it in one space. And then um, I'll just grab this, this for loop up here, which should still, should work because we named it D. Uh, although now I'm not going to call this P for probability, I'm just going to call it uh, CNT for count. Okay. We run this notice we are getting counts out the other side of it I think that's good to see this is what we would expect to see if uh, you know we sample 10,000 items we have a lambda of 10 and um, you know we can we can see our expected counts in 10,000 observations through this directly all right, so let's call it there. Uh, we were able to wrap up Poisson uh, today, which is good. Um, so I'm going to confer with Clark, and we might do a, just an extra functions day on uh, Saturday. Uh, I'm going to re re reiterate this thing that uh, we've been trying to mention a lot. Practice a lot. Practice Code Wars. Um, practice in our materials, for sure. Uh, go to Code Wars, practice problems on there. Um, the more time you spend coding and, uh, you know, hitting your head up against the wall, as essentially, with code, the better you are going to get at it. And the primary skill set that you need to have going into the DSI is code, is writing Python. Um, the quantitative understanding is important, uh, but if you can express things through code, that's really what it's about. Uh, feel free to sign off for the night. Thanks so much, and um, I'm going to stop recording.